built atop the Bangara hill, the fort at Jhansi is a rock fort, Agiri Durga. It was commissioned by the Bundel ruler Veer Singh Dev in the first half of the 17th century. The Bundel architectural style was a unique blend of three distinct styles, the Hindu Rajput, the Jain temple and the Indo-Islamic Indo-Sarsenic. And many of the buildings within the fort constructed during this period reflect this. After the Bundelas, the control over the fort passed to the Marathas. After the Marathas, the fort was taken over by the British, who ruthlessly destroyed many of the buildings constructed by their predecessors. They rushed through construction of buildings, barracks to house their soldiers to meet with their strategic and military requirements. This fort is a unique showcase where three distinct fort architectural styles can be seen at one place. But this is not the only reason this fort is remarkable. The fort of Jhansi is like a child compared to other forts of India, both in age and in scale. But it occupies a very special niche in the history of India. This is where the spark was ignited that started the conflagration of 1857. This is where the first battle cry was given for the first war of Indian independence, which made the position of the British very precarious. They never could be secure after that. <laughs> Jhansi in Uttar Pradesh is at a distance of about 425 kilometers from Delhi. This is arguably the most famous fort in Bundelkhand. It was built by the rulers as a small castle to house a garrison of soldiers to stand guard at the borders of their state. Soon it acquired unique strategic significance. Jhansi Shahar or Iske Sats of the Bundel Kantaye Ilaka hai, ye Sara Chetu Etihazi Pachus of Badasi Barahua. इतिहास के मध्यकाल का जो चंदेल कालीन और प्रतिहार काल का वैभव है यहां की पूरा संपदा यहां पर दूर-दूर तक अंचलों में बिक्री हुई है द स्मॉल म्यूजियम ऑफ झांसी इज फुल ऑफ प्राइसलेस आर्टिफैक्ट्स Some statues date back to the period of the imperial Guptas. Others are from the time when the Pratiharas, Kalcharis and Chandelas ruled this region. These objects bear testimony to the fact that Jhansi was situated at the crossroads of a historic trade route connecting north with south. Jhansi was a part of Orcha state, but the Marathas chased away the commander of the garrison fort and occupied it. The Kiledar had the status of a local governor appointed by the Peshwa, but with the passage of time he began to assert his independence and behaved like a small ruler. He continued to benefit as a member of the Maratha Confederacy. The Maratha expansion as a confederacy from 1709 and particularly after 1720s is remarkable. In the process of expansion, the Marathas planted themselves firmly in central India. And Jhansi is one of the principalities. There are several subordinated principalities, independent principalities, which are there. The fort of Jhansi may be small in size, but as it is situated on a steep rock, it presented a difficult challenge for the invaders. Watchtowers on the rampart enabled the sentries to scan the horizon 
to monitor the movements of any invading force. The guarding walls undulate with the uneven ground and the towers are built at different levels. Cannons placed on these reinforced the fort's defences and kept it safe during sieges. झांसी की गवर्नरशिप और महाराजाशिप दोनों बहुत ही समृद्ध थे और जितना फाइटिंग मटेरियल इनके पास था वो किसी रियासत पर नहीं था और किसी की फिर बाद में हिम्मत भी नहीं पड़ी रघुनाथ राव प्रथम सूबेदार निवाल करके बाद के यहाँ झांसी पर हमला करें The fort has ten gates that had to be successively crossed to enter. This wasn't easy. Large cannons placed on the towers struck terror in the heart of the enemy. Among many such guns, Kadak Bijli and Bhavani Shankar are most famous. These were used effectively by Maharani Lakshmibai in her fight with the British. Memorials to Gunner Gos Muhammad and Motibai Jalkari stand inside the fort. The two had ably assisted the Rani and had laid down their lives defending the fort. Well, in the beginning, it was a very small principality during the Mughal period, but after the break of the Mughal Empire, like many successor states, it emerged in that part of Bundelkhand. 18th century in Indian history is a period where one centralized imperial power gets replaced with many regional powers, which are capable of retaining their autonomy and also competing with others for territory and resources. Now, Jhansi was one such example. Panch Mahal is one of the few buildings that has escaped total ruin. Built in many layers at different times, it showcases the blending of different architectural styles. Though the British demolished most of the structures after they captured the fort, they retained this intact to house their own troops inside the fort. This palace was linked to other parts of the fort with a web of underground tunnels secret tunnels and there's secret doors and I could be kept on what is happening outside. The supplies could be sort of secretly brought in. So they were very meticulously planned. And in, in terms of, uh, in the times of attack and in times of surrender, the escape routes, they also had to be, you know, planned. And there was a lot of the fort which was invisible. And not only from outside the fort, but inside the fort. Baradari is a large pavilion built in the Mughal style that breaks the monotony of the harsh military architecture dominated by towers and ramparts. The feminine building stands out as a charming exception in the predominantly masculine fort. It seems to tell us that life has a softer, pleasant dimension that is free from strife and struggle. Bundeli ki jo mati hai, uske baare mein Mahakavi Abdesh ji likhte hain. 
बुंदे लोग की सुनो कहानी बुंदे लोग की वाणी में और पानी डारे यहाँ का पानी आज यहाँ के पानी में यह है बुंदेली की संस्कृति उस संस्कृति की कोई बराबरी नहीं कर सकती अरे सिंहासन हिल उठे राज बंसो में भगटी ताली थी और बूढ़े भारत में भी आई फिर से नई जवानी थी बुंदे ले हर बोलो के मुंह हमने सुनी कहानी Lakshmibai was born and named Manu in the family of a poor Maharashtrian Brahmin who worked in the office of the Peshwa. She showed signs of exceptional intelligence and courage from an early age. In adolescence, she was married off to Gangadhar Rao, the ruler of Jhansi. She began to take interest in governance after her marriage. Nineteenth century India was a time and a place when the girl child was greatly discriminated against. It was felt that the place of a girl or a woman was within the confines of the four walls of the house. Lakshmi Bai challenged this notion from the outset. From her childhood and adolescence, she insisted that she be treated at par with a male child, and a considerate father allowed her to learn horse riding, learn fencing. She took a keen interest in the affairs of state, and that is why she was in a position to meet the challenges ably when confronted with them. When her husband died, unfortunately, the British threatened that they would apply the doctrine of lapse and take over the state of Jhansi. Lakshmi Bai took over the reins of governance in her own hand and ruled the principality ably. efficiently more than anything else she was accessible to all her subjects especially to those who are addressed today as the minorities and the dalits the deprived sections of society and that is what the reason is that people like gos mohammad moti bai and jhalkari willingly sacrifice themselves to ensure that lakshmi bai has a safe passage from a besieged fort when she wanted to break through she may have ruled for a very short period of time but left an indelible imprint on the minds of the people of Jhansi She made serving the people of her state the main purpose of her life to protect and nurture them like her own children She was well aware how difficult the life of the common people was in an area that was arid and rocky the british made life even more miserable by constantly demanding higher revenue and taxes they weren't interested in the welfare of the people at all in a short time the rani succeeded in eliminating rampant corruption in state administration she initiated and implemented many schemes that fitted the poor and the suffering kon ka ladka jab kalantar mein guzar gaya to unhone damodar rao ke naam ke ek ladke ko apne hi vansh ke god liya us samay yurop jo tha usne unke god naam pe aitraj kiya और उसके उनके गोदनामे को नहीं माना रानी झांसी लड़ी यहाँ के जो न्यायालय थे उन पर लड़ी और लड़ने के बाद वो पूर्वी काउंसिल तक लड़ने गई लंदन तक कलकत्ते में उनने वकील किए तमाम लोगों ने उनकी मदद की लेकिन अंग्रेजों ने उनका किले को उनकी रियासत को कोर्ट ऑफ बायस कर दिया उनको छह रुपए महीने की पेंशन पर रानी महल में रखा और किला उन्होंने अंग्रेजों ने अपने कब्जे में कर लिया The British may have taken over Jhansi but the Rani ruled the hearts and minds of her people. They approached her with their petitions in the Rani Mahal and expected her as heir sovereign to provide required relief. The Rani tried her best to help and bided her time carefully 
monitoring, seething with discontent. जहाँ तक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन की ताल्लुक है तो वो बहुत तेज थी मुकदमा खुद सुनती थी और फैसले खुद डिक्टेट करती थी और कभी कभी बेट लेकर के अगर किसी को सजा देना होती थी तो वो सजा भी दे देती थी तो एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ये था लैंड रेवेन्यू वगैरह के बारे में जितनी जातियां थी लूट खसोड़ती बैल खोलवा ये सब महारानी के जमाने में नहीं हो रहा था कॉमन आदमी को ये फील करा देना है कि तुम्हारे लिए तुम्हारी बेहतरी के लिए कोई देखने सुनने वाला है The inner walls of the Rani Mahal are decorated with beautifully coloured paintings. The Rani lived a simple Spartan life, but understood well how these outward appearances were necessary to maintain the dignity of her position and proclaim majesty. Her claim as a sovereign made it imperative to display trappings of royalty. British policy of annexing or withdrawing privileges of successor states or treating independent chiefdoms, expanding their own hegemony, dictating terms. All these factors configured into this big project of getting rid of the British colonial rule in India, and Jhansi played a very important role with Rani Jhansi becoming a major figure in a larger-than-life figure in this campaign, which we still remember with great fondness and an excitement. Soon an opportunity came her way to teach the British a lesson. The sepoys in Barakpur cantonment mutinied in 1857. The rebellion spread fast, and the mutineers captured the Red Fort in Delhi. They accepted Bahadur Shah Zafar as their leader. The shock of this upheaval. shook the very foundations of british rule in india the rebel forces launched an attack on the british position in jhansi fort the british sought help from orcha but before reinforcement could reach they were defeated and expelled rani regained her fort the revolt is strong it shakes them up there's a recording chaplain k brown is reporting we cannot believe that we escaped all this that the revolt did not take us over the importance of jhansi is not militaristic it is symbolic the fort is crucial the fort is important it is stormed unfortunately those who challenged the british didn't succeed in their struggle by march 1858 the british forces had crushed the revolt the british laid a siege to drive the rani out and ordered relentless bombardment the rani took over command and resisted the invaders for many days when she became aware that it wasn't possible to hold out much longer she broke out of the siege fighting with a band of hand picked soldiers aap kalpana kar sakte hain ki jhansi ne woh sahadat di hai puri duniya ke liye jiski wajah se united kingdom जिनका राज उदय से अस्त तक था अमेरिका से लेकर के चीन तक जिनका गुलाम था जिनके राज में सूरज भी डूबता था ये झांसी ही वो जगह है जिसकी वजह से पूरी दुनिया में अंग्रेजों से लोहा लेने के लिए खुददार और कद्दावर लोग तैयार हुए और उन्नीस में देश आजाद हुआ मोटली वेड 
Rani breathed her last, fighting the British forces. Her sacrifice continued to inspire patriots to resist and take revenge for years to come. ये यहीं पे भगवान दास महाओर यहीं पे सरदार सबराव मलकापुर यहीं पे चंद्रशेखर ने आकर के बम बनाने की शिक्षा ली यहीं पे डॉक्टर भगवान दास महाओर जैसे लोग जिन्होंने भोसावल कांड में मजिस्ट्रेट के सामने अंग्रेजों के गवाह को गोली मारी यहीं पर राम साहेब शर्मा हुए स्वतंत्रता संग्राम सेनियों की लाइन लग गई झांसी एक कारखाना हुआ अंग्रेजों से लड़ने के लिए यहाँ पे एक स्टीम तैयार की गई यहाँ पे वॉलंटियर तैयार किए गए तात्या टोपे मलकारपुर डॉक्टर भगवान दास माहौर सदा सबराव मलकारपुर और फिर इतिहासकारों ने उसमें अपनी आहुति डॉक्टर रुन्नाउलाल वर्मा मैथीश्वर गुप्ता सुभद्रा कुमारी चौहान जैसे लोग आए जिनकी वजह से झांसी का नाम दुनिया में रोशन हुआ इन सारी बातों का श्रेय झांसी की रानी को जाता है झांसी के किले को जाता है और झांसी के निवासियों को जाता है उनका मस्तक गौरवान्वित होता है कि झांसी की वजह से अंग्रेजों के पाँव अठारह सौ सन्तानवे उकड़े उन्नीस में अंग्रेजों का अपना बिस्तर बोरिया बांध करके और लंदन को कूच करना पड़ा और हमारे हाथ में हमारा शासन आया इसका श्रेय झांसी को जाता है The soul-stirring saga of the Rani of Jhansi spread like wildfire all across the land. Her memory is hallowed, and she enjoys unimagined love and respect. Her deeds are sung in myriad folk art forms. Barakatha in Andhra Pradesh fills the audience with nostalgia and invigorating inspiration. One hundred and fifty years have passed since the flames of that conflagration engulfed Jhansi. Rani Lakshmi Bai lives on in memory. These pictorial images depicting her in battle dress have made her features familiar to every Indian. She is truly immortal. Je Jhansi ki baam. वखल बिस्व में कर गई बाई साब जूना यह है झांसी की गौरव गाथा सीधे साधे सरल सले ही मन के बड़े उदार धर्म और ईमान बने हैं जिनके पहरेदार न सुख को और न दुख को छोड़ सौ सौ करोड़ पेर की संपद बारो बारो स्वर्ग करोड़ चलो तो बुल गाओ उनकी ओर जिनमें बहे ने की नदिया सरम की उठे हो यह है बुंदर कर Jhansi changed the course of Indian history. The land is redolent with memories of the people's beloved queen Lakshmi Bai. She restored our lost self-respect and self-confidence. She inspired us to resist injustice and exploitation. This is what has made Jhansi a pilgrimage for every patriot. <laughs>